leave that in the woods. But if you got stuff big enough, you know, like I said, 16 inches long, we call them turtles. <laughs> yeah. Have you, see, uh, have you seen the way you I'm sure you turtle. both have it. In Germany, when they cut the wedge out, they, they have two people working with right. small axes, and yeah. they cut the wedge out, they're in sync with each other, bang, yeah. bang, that's bang. A, that's actually a nice way to do it. It's, it's really easy on your back, and if you got a, a square bitted axe, about a 24, 30 inch handle, you can just get right in there and just go down the line. Yeah, Did so you do it that way? Bang, 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 bang. Really nice. I've seen, I've seen uh, photos of it, and I've seen... Uh, a short clip on it, but I've never never tried working. Somewhere. Well, they did that at one of the guild conferences one year. They did the Bavarian method. Ah. It was uh, Tim Burby was one of the guys. I can't remember who else it was. We picked it up from Will Truax. Well, Will was the other guy, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't find evidence of that up here. I think that's a German thing, probably down in Pennsylvania. Well, I, was telling, I was telling people earlier that Al Thoreau, when he traveled in the Maine woods, talked about seeing an axe, you know, when he went to a, a camp. That would be all 1840s. He saw uh, a felling axe with a handle a foot longer than normal, which had to have been a scoring axe. That's yeah, it. standing it on is. top like that? Yeah, yeah. So that would have been... Yeah, I made a 42-inch handle once. Well, that would have been... <laughs> throw would have, would have... You didn't want to have to bend over at all, did you? Yeah, I hate that bending over. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, curious. and you're, you're, tall, yeah. you're, you're tall, so you got... And maybe even tall helps with it. No, it doesn't. It's still just as far you would have bend over. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't uh, think anything helps. But back to the juggling, you know what I saw in a barn, it was in New Hampshire too. Uh, the juggling notches was very evenly spaced, so I took out my Stanley tape. You know how there's a red thing at every 16 inches? Mm -hmm. They were exact. exact. I, I took a picture of it. Held it next 16 to that inches post. It was 16 on center. So somebody had a stove or something. It was and the <laughs> sausage, <laughs> I want yeah. those juggles to be 16, no longer than 16 <laughs> inches. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's anal, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> How many hewers, you know? He would have had to mark it out. Stuff. I didn't get that. Well, maybe, probably not. The guy maybe his handle was 16 it, inches long. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the Canadian thing, the guys doing the Ewan weren't the guys doing the uh, scoring either. In other pictures, I've seen there'd be five guys on the other end doing the scoring and two doing the Ewan. So yeah, they they swap at lunch, right? They had people. Well, I bet you that. The old guys got you, to do the Ewan. Uh, once you got the, you wanted the job of Ewing, it's got to be a hell of a lot easier than the job yeah. of scoring. Eighty percent of the axe strokes are in the. Yeah, it took 40, it, right? four scores to keep one hewer busy. I wouldn't. I always have. remember that because it was four score and seven years ago. <laughs> four or five. Yeah, so eighty percent of the time, that's it, yeah. if it's done right, you know, if the scores don't go to the line, the, yeah, it's, it's all bets are off. Yeah, you can pretty much, you can make it hard for the guy. <laughs> I to can keep sure up. can. Yeah. I can hear the hewer screaming. No, the hell didn't go to this. Yeah, line. if you don't score deep yeah. enough, the bottom edge blows out. You know, you get the, yep. the wood just rolls off the bottom. And that's always. Uh, well, some woods, are, if they have any kind of spiral or anything, they're going to it's hard to keep the bottom edge from doing that anyway. You know, if it has a little. Uh, <laughs> Little, with a little corkscrew to it. Well, you know what I've noticed with that, because we get a lot of twisted timber up in my town, a lot of spruce, is uh, they were peeling off a whole face at a time. Like, you wouldn't see a finished end here as far as you're going. There would be a piece laying over which right. looked like this. Right. The full length right. of the log. Right, right. That's they go I mean. down yeah. part way. So what they do is they, I usually go backwards, so they, they come down like this, yeah. and then go back like that. Go up. You know, yeah. to catch the grain going the other way. Right, you can go forward on, on the, the bottom. bottom edge, yeah. Right. Yeah, and you kind of have to on on spiral. Right. You have to. You have to. Yeah, you know, that's what I find. You have to use one direction on the top, different direction on the bottom. And you stop right in the middle. And those uh, double bitted axes are better for spiral because they're like a gouge. You yeah. Know, you tilt it out so much that it's a curve. Kind right. Of a, you get a little. Kind of, yeah, yeah like scoops that. it out better. Yeah. You prefer the double bedded? The double? Double doubles? bevel. No, I, I like, uh, depends on what I have for material. My two favorite axes are that Pennsylvania pattern and this one. This is a double yeah. bevel, and the Pennsylvania pattern is a single one. Those are my two favorite. Right. But I notice even I that done. Pennsylvania has a, a, a little bit of a bevel well, on the other side. This is, uh, that's, a, that's a replica of a, of a Viking 12th century Ewing axe, and it does have an ellipse in the blade. Um, you know, it's super light. It's better for warfare. <laughs> yeah. I can see throwing that pretty good. All your tapestry, that axe is shown in the Ewing Timbers for the uh, boats, the Viking boats. I'm going to try it out. Yep. You want clear wood, and you've got to strike. 
got to move forward with that axe. It doesn't work moving backwards. By doing this, you use this one. You can cut it down, actually. It's too short. Yes. I need that. It's just like a paper cutter. Skip along like that. And it kind of, from standing up. And this is, uh, this is my outline axe. I don't like it too much. I don't know if you want to do a team, but like my two. We had one of the shots for a while. That's weird. It's like a little samurai. Ne that's my retirement act. The only way to pound and a half. <laughs> but if you get to hang, I did some of the I timber. I did nice all. Finishes. I did all the uh, yellow, yellow pine with that axe uh, at uh, at uh, South Carolina. You can probably go back over something and get a nice finish with it. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, if you once you get the feel for the for the strike and stuff, and it, and it, it doesn't leave much for scallops. It's a very flat surface because it, it's too broad a blade for. Uh, but you can't.